Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm an artist, I paint and I draw and I have been working this year since lockdown uh, with developing my own paints and pigments made from a number of different materials. So in this video I'm going to show you a few of the mudstone paint uh, paintings that I've been making recently, collecting mud from the shores of the Somerset coast, creating paint from that mud, playing with different recipes, looking at different ways in which I can connect the materials and the place. So this is an example of one of the mudstone small little studies of paintings where you can actually see the grit and the sand. Um, and I'm finding this a really grounding and incredibly earthy experience. I've been experimenting with different ways of um, putting marks onto the paper using the mud paint as it behaves in really different ways to any kind of paint I've ever used before. So in this drawing, for instance, I've worked with sticks, um, trying different methods really to apply the mud. Uh, the mud is diluted down, mixed down into different recipes, uh, all of it collected from the beach along the North Somerset coast. Um, it's feeling really earthy, it's feeling really connected to my ancestors um, and it's feeling incredibly authentic and a really lovely natural development from the work that I was doing already with rocks. Um, so for quite a while now I've been working with the idea of the rock as metaphor, sometimes for permanence, um, sometimes for stability and also I've been very interested in the way that rocks are gently eroded um, on our coast. So for example down near to the sea the rocks tend to be more rounded, more jagged as they fall from the cliffs um, and that kind of sense that they are actually continually in flux and they're not actually anything like as permanent as we like to imagine them to be um, it's definitely something that I work with. So in a drawing like the one I'm doing here working just with sticks, um, sometimes with quills that I've made myself out of seagull feathers that I've collected on the beach, um, laying down and applying li lines of mudstone paint. Um, in repetition, creating a sense of movement and dynamism within these apparently Im immensely static forms, um, the rocks appear to kind of shimmer, they appear to move and to have life to them um, and question our ideas around the permanence of them too. So working with this um, method, I've been really understanding the limitations and possibilities of working with the mudstone pigments. So for example, in a piece like this, I've begun to experiment with pouring um, the paint as much as applying it with traditional tools. I truly find that I have been unlearning how to paint. Um, these mudstone paints really do not behave in the same way as any traditional paint I've ever worked with before. Um, so now the conversation really in the works is about the similarities and differences and the contrast between the poured marks and the handmade marks, um, simultaneously kind of expressing something really which is a metaphor for that human relationship and interventions in nature as well. The parts we control, the parts we don't control as well. The video is very much populated uh, with images of works which are many of which are works in progress um, and by the time you watch this video they probably don't exist anymore. This is an earlier stage um, of the image that was shown before this one. Um, here I've been experimenting with adding Indian ink into the mudstone paint and it creates the most amazingly matte intense deep black where the pigment has actually adhered to the particles in the mud. In addition to working with mud, I've also been collecting other objects off the beaches. Um, so this piece here is uh, ink that I've made from a rusty piece of scaffolding that I collected off Cornish Beach. Um, spent a long time soaking it in distilled vinegar. It created the most beautifully rich pigment. As well as pigments that I've collected and created from what I found on the beach. Um, during lockdown, I was spending a lot of time walking in the local woodlands to me. Um, and this is how the process of making my own paints really began. So I started off with collecting wild pigments from the flowers that I was collecting in the woodlands around me. This image here and the next one um, are images that I've created using paints made from buttercup petals um, and dandelion flowers as well. These create the most incredible fugitive volatile pigments uh, which have been immensely exciting for me to work with. Um, I found that in the process of making the paintings what I would normally expect to happen with paints just doesn't happen. As one wash or layer of paint is applied over the top of a layer that's already dry, uh, rather than intensifying and enriching the colour, the paint literally disappears. The paper goes back to white again and it can take anything up to 24 hours for the colour to then reveal itself, um, to actually understand and to know and to see what's going to remain 
um, and whether or not any of the previous layers will actually still be visible. Um, this is fantastic because it is the most uncertain way of painting. Um, and as I say, this is something I began doing during lockdown. Um, and this year, I think we'd all agree, has been possibly one of the most uncertain times that we've ever lived through. So to be working with paints that disappear, paints that don't behave as you'd expect them to do, things which are totally unpredictable, felt to me to be the most comfortable way of working, the most perfect way of expressing and responding to this incredibly volatile period that we've been living through.